Guys, Seti again. I'm back out here testing again. Uh, in one of my last videos, I showed the effects of a clogged condenser. Now I want to show the effect of low airflow inside. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a garbage bag and kind of block off my filter. So I restrict the air going through the evaporator coil. And I want to show you all the results of that. So let's get started. Alrighty, so these are my befores. I've got 41 degree evaporator temperature, 105 degree condensing. Our line sets are 50 on the suction, 92 on the high side. I'm right around 8, 9 degrees superheat, right around 12 degrees subcool. 122 on the low side, 340 pounds on the high side. 500 watts clamped same way nothing's changed we're at 2500 watts all right guys this is my filter I have the infinity air purifier this one's been in for about six or seven months now so it is pretty dirty but I still see plenty of light through it and my static pressure right now runs at about a 0 0.5 0 0.5 hash on my running there so I've still got a lot of life even though it looks pretty funky. Still a lot of life in this filter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in a garbage bag and I'm going to insert it back into the furnace and that ought to give us a pretty good restriction. So let me go get this in there. I'm going to let it run for a little bit. Then we'll come back and do our measurements again. Alright guys, I've had this running for a little bit. Everything seems to be balanced out pretty well now. So now my evaporating temperature is at 26, and my condensing is at 99. Now, you want to get your indoor temperature, you want to subtract 35, and that should get you about where your evaporation temperature should be. Uh, so right now my indoor temperature is 76, so I should be what, around 41 degrees, so I'm way lower than that. Uh, so that's going to be a way you can tell if your coil is clogged or not. Uh, your pressures. You know, that's going to be way low. Uh, working on an R410A, you should never have anything under 100 pounds. Uh, let's go on to the next one. The line temperatures were at 32 degrees. Uh, this is why if you have low airflow, that you're going to notice that everything's going to freeze up. Uh, part of the job of an air conditioner is to remove humidity. That water, that moisture is going to run down your evaporator coil, and if that coil is 32 degrees or colder, it's going to freeze. So we need to keep that usually right around 40 degrees or so. Superheat's 10 degrees. Like I said this is a TFB system. It's always going to do what it can to maintain 10 degrees. Subcooling is right around 9 degrees. So I'm going to print this one out, that way we can do a side-by-side -side comparison on that one also. Alright, it is printing. Alright, our watts, you know, not a lot changed on it when we're dealing with the indoor issue. So it's about the same, get it hooked up the same. And we've got nothing's changed on it. So 2200 watts. Alright, guys, again, I'm sorry about the low light out here. I try to get my shop light. I have my low, low, low on it. So we'll just make this work. I'm just going to get an airflow reading again. And I want to see what the effects of the block filter has on the system capacity. So give me just a minute. We are at 9000 BTU with 160 CFM. Alright guys, I'm going to do my kilowatts on my blower motor also. Alright, so this is with a clean filter in it. We're at 0.17 kilowatts. Let me, let me clog up my filter again. We'll see what the results is there. This is a variable drive furnace. Alright, you're going to notice that the RPM had sped up. Like I said, it's variable speed. Uh, but now my watts is 
All right, guys. So this is the results of the clog filter on my low side. Uh, the pressure before was 121. After was 84. The evaporator coil was 41 degrees before. After was 23 degrees. All right, we're not moving any air through that coil, so it can't pick up any heat. So my line temperature was 50 degrees before, 35 degrees after. Superheat was nine. And 11 degrees after. Over here on my high side, we was 344 before, 316 after, so that dropped. My condenser coil was 105 before, 99 degrees after, that also dropped. My line temperature was 93 degrees before, 99 after. Subcooling was 11, 8 after. Now, as far as measuring the performance side of it, my supply temperature was 53 degrees, 38 degrees after. My return was 72. Actually dropped to 70 after. CFM was uh, 1,089, 155 after. This was the extreme. Now you're probably not going to run into too many filters that was this clogged. This is really extreme, but just trying to get the point across. BTU before 35,900, 9,000 BTUs after. Watts, this is on my blower motor. It's 180 watts before, uh, 340 watts after. My uh, condensing unit was 2,400 watts before, 2,200 watts after. Now, my total, my total watts with my blower and my condenser was at 2630. Before 2593 after, so that gives me an EER of 13.7 before and a 3.5 after. So this is going to apply pretty much to dirty filters or plugged up evaporator coils, dirty blower motors, blower wheels. Uh, the same thing that's going to restrict your airflow can potentially cause this. So, this is what I came up with. Again, it's just a simple test that you can do to show the homeowner uh, your before and after service. You know, they like to see these numbers, so that's impressive. If you get there and it's 3.5, when you get there and you're leaving, it's running at 13.7. You know, that's pretty impressive. So, good luck, and we'll see you in the next video.